I'd like to cover political advertising from 1991, the first election I observed. <coughs> National, I'm sorry, I have a cold, came back. I don't blame Taiwan for that. Um, 1991 to 2012. So um, I'll go through some of the earlier ads and show you the differences and then get to the ads for 2012. Um, First election I observed, the national, and I have all the originals, many of the originals here with me, but I put them on PowerPoint. Uh, you can see the larger versions. In the 1991 election, it was indirect election for the president. It was only in 1996 you had a direct election uh, for Li Donghui for the president uh, of Taiwan. It was only four years after the lifting of martial law. You had a lot of independents. You had these large districts with 29 candidates running for 10 seats. A lot of animosity to the KMT for what had happened uh, under martial law, but you had the KMT controlling the media. Uh, if you look at the TV commercials back then, which I'm not going to show you for a bit of time, uh, which I collected, <coughs> the KMT campaign emphasized stability, what's going on in Taiwan. They had Beirut, Lebanon, civil war, Ethiopian famine. They interviewed illegal workers from uh, Southeast Asia. A DPP basically said what we've had under the KMT rule is compulsive conformity. Everybody has to be the same. They didn't want to say independence necessarily directly, but they used duly sukau, independent thought. And so um, here's one of the DPP uh, ads in 1991 where they've taken the stand of the Chinese Communist Party Politburo members um, and what they've said, uh, DPP stand and the KMT stand, and basically saying, Premier Hao Bo Tsun, which side are you on? Basically saying, in 1991, the KMT was no different from the CCP. If you want to look at the extreme independent candidates, I visited Su Cho Jun the day after a bomb went off in his office, and he was very critical. Uh, you know, Qing Suan, Guomindang, liquidate the, the Guomindang, or Jing Gao, A Hui Zai, Li Dong Hui, basically. Hao Bo Tsun, Hun Dan, Bu Gun Dan, Taiwan Wan Dan. You won't find this kind of campaign, uh, it's too offensive now. But in 1991, you had that kind of thing. He actually uh, did not get a seat. He was not among the, the top 10 in that district in Taipei. Uh, when you get, go ahead to 2004, I think that was the high tide in many ways of negative campaigning, uh, complete polarization of the electorate and the candidates. <coughs> Identity issues, loyalty issues, Taiwan was still an issue. You had controversial shooting of Chen Shui Bian. Um, there was a fear factor there. The potential threat uh, from the PRC was a key issue used. Uh, Chen Shui Bian said he was like John F. Kennedy, standing up to missiles, uh, like the Cuban Missile Crisis. KMT said, no, you're more like Hitler, you're a dictator, because um, he'd already been in office for four years. Uh, very close election. Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein were all involved in the election, believe it or not. Um, and so here's the missiles. Uh, here's Jiang Zemin, Gung To Shi Bai, Jung Gung Zui Ai, meaning that if the referendum <coughs> the DPP was promoting against the missiles was not passed, only the Chinese Communists would be really be happy. And he's holding up, Jiang Zemin is holding up the uh, KMT symbol of, of the two fingers. Um, so uh, Chen Shui Bian said, John F. Kennedy is the image I'm using. Uh, KMT said no, uh, it's more like Hitler, a newspaper ad. Um, um, I'll be in Tai. Now, uh, the blue background indicates a KMT ad, the green background indicates a DPP ad. Um, Osama bin Laden says, I'm the well known terrorist. I have the original here. He says, I'm the well known terrorist, bin Laden. You probably heard of me. Uh, I support IBN. Uh, of course. So, uh, the, the other side of the poster, you have Saddam Hussein with a gun saying, you know, uh, I, I, I'm a big believer in referendums. I use them all the time in Iraq. And uh, you better know what, if you, you better vote for IBN if you know what, what's good for you. And here's my gun here. Uh, so it was a quite negative uh, campaign. Um, I found it interesting that uh, Lian Zhan and Sung Chu Yu, James Sung, had to, from my point of view, kiss the ground to show how much they love Taiwan, uh, that they're really supporting Taiwan. When you have to, it's like Nixon saying, I'm not a crook. When you have to say that or you have to kiss the ground, you've got a problem, I think. Uh, Chen Shui Bian doesn't have to kiss the ground in Taiwan. Uh, then, of course, after uh, the shooting, uh, I'll be, uh, the different newspapers had different takes on it. Certainly Lin Ho Bao, a, a pan blue newspaper, uh, what are you afraid of? Let's have a recount, a new election, and so on, because they said the assassination was faked. Uh, in the LA Times, um, supporters of the KMT said, who shot Taiwan's president? Um, it's an alleged assassination attempt. It must be investigated by independent experts, and so on. 
Well, po what's interesting, before we get to 2008, the post-2004 um, uh, campaign ads were interesting. Ma Ying-jeou took a chance and was criticized by some people in the KMT. Of course, he took out an ad on February 14, 2006, in the pro-DPP Zio Shirbao, uh, on the importance of maintaining the status quo. So here's the ad, which I have with me as well, that everyone in Taiwan really wants to maintain the stability, um, the continuity, the peace, and so on. And so he already was staking his claim, I think, as to what his campaign would be in 2008. Then you have the 2008 election, where the focus on economic issues and a common market with the mainland. The KMT tied the DPP to Chen Shui-bian's corruption. Um, the DPP stirred fears of the implications of a common market on employment in Taiwan, uh, also the fear of a renewed KMT dictatorship, um, DPP warning of Taiwan becoming like Tibet, I'll show you some of the posters on that, and also UN membership was a minor issue in the campaign. What's interesting in 2008 and both 2012, fear was an important factor. In 2008, they said, the KMT's been out of office for eight years. If they get back in, they've already won the legislative elections in January, they're going to control the legislature and the presidency. They're going to be just like the bad old days. Also, uh, there's a danger of the mainland. You can't trust the KMT. Uh, in 2012, there's a different kind of fear going on. If the DPP gets back in, all our economic, well, economic benefits from ECFA, uh, all our our peace and stability with the mainland will no longer uh, be in place because the mainland will not treat the DPP as an equal power. I'll get to that when I get to 2012, hopefully. But if you look at the campaign uh, slogans uh, and posters and newspaper ads, Ma Ying-jeou, as Clay showed in one of his slides, positioning himself as a statesman, basically, above the fray. Uh, very much emphasized economic uh, campaigning with these, uh, this, uh, this Kwai Jingji, um, uh, uh, this uh, Big Macs, a series of Big Macs, and all the things that this election, the common market and the election of KMT will bring to Taiwan. Kentucky Fried Chicken, of course, with a very full basket. Um, and of course, even though Chen shui wasn't running, making sure that everybody remembered uh, what Abraham Lincoln said, you can fall some of the people all the time and so on. You can't fool all the people all the time as Chen Shui Bian had done and Frank Xie, Xie Changting, was in that same mold. Uh, they talked about DPP corruption, KMT ads. DPP ads, on the other hand, uh, talked about some of the dirty tricks that the KMT, they argued, had been using. Um, and this was an example of, of, also they said, if you look at Yi uh, Dang Du Da, you know, the, the danger of the KMT having a dictatorship began controlling just one party. And they, they used the same thing in a sense in 2012, saying the mainland only negotiates with the KMT. They have to negotiate with Taiwan. That's why we need a Taiwan consensus. Right now, it's just a KMT 92 consensus. That's not good enough. And here's a DPP ad showing uh, KMT officials apologizing for a raid on, on some offices, DPP offices, which they shouldn't have done. Um, now, they had also their fear factors, which couldn't work in 2012 because you already had four years of the KMT rule. But in 2008, it was used. If there's a common market um, with the mainland, all these mainlanders will come here. You're going to be unemployed. You're going to have lower wages. Uh, you're going to lose you're, uh, you're going to be fired. Uh, all these guys that had ads like this, these two country bumpkin-looking types with picking university degrees, they're going to have all these people coming from the mainland who are complete idiots, really, um, and they're going to claim to be Beida graduates. And we have, won't be able to tell. Um, not only that, but they're going to be urinating in all our public parks. <laughs> so the fear of the mainland was there in 2008. Of course, Ma ying Joe and Peking Opera, basically, he's all style, no substance. Uh, Tibet was an issue because, after all, it was March 2008, and there were a lot of shrines to free Tibet because of what was going on in Tibet in 2008 in, in March. They had, in, in one ad, um, you know, one day the People's Liberation Army is going to be sweeping the streets of Taipei just like they did in Lhasa. Uh, so if the KMT wins, you can invite in the mainland uh, immediately. The PLA will be here. So it was a fear tactic. And of course, the UN, Taiwan shouldn't be an international orphan. We should try and get applied to be back, have a referendum on support for UN membership, even though there's absolutely no chance for that to happen. OK, now we get to 2012. Um, and you have less negative campaigning, although certainly the KMT highlighted 
alleged continuing corruption of, of, of the DPP. Um, the DPP was promoting, as Clay showed, the softer image uh, of Tsai Ing-wen. Uh, KMT emphasizing the successes of their four years, peace across the straits, political stability. The KMT benefited from the 92 consensus, but what's interesting to me, they don't really talk about the 92 consensus specifically, because everybody knows about it. It's the DPP that's basically talking about the 92 consensus, uh, and that the mainland should deal with Taiwan, not just one political party. DPP promotes coalition government, which to me is a sign of a party that thinks they're going to lose. Uh, the DPP promotes the first female president, uh, as Clay showed in one of his slides. Fairness and justice, ECFA benefiting, uh, DPP says ECFA, the Economic Cooperation Agreement, benefits only big companies. Uh, the DPP brings up Ma's so-called peace agreement argument, piggy banks, Clay talked about. What was interesting to me also, the KMT was very successful in co-opting all of the slogans of the DPP, inclu including justice and fairness. That we were all at Ma's speech in Taichung where he saw that. So here's one poster, which is very clear. It's, it's this uh, Liang An He Ping, Zhong Zhu Wan Ding, it's peace and stability. Um, uh, but the KMT basically, I'm sorry, the DPP says, we don't want the 92 consensus. Don't use the, you don't want to use the 92 consensus to scare people. Uh, you know, uh, you're scaring people with the 92 consensus. Um, so they're the ones who bring it up, because the KMT doesn't have to bring it up. Everybody knows that they support that. Uh, if you should look at my, and this is something I think Dan will talk about, because I've read his Foreign Affairs uh, article. Um, the, if you look at uh, Ma Ying Zhou's five reasons for voting for him, uh, they, a lot of them talk about economics and so on, but all of them really deal with the relationship with the mainland in one form or another. You can't, as Dan Porks in his article, you can't really separate the economics from the mainland relationship, from the 92 consensus and so on, cross straight relations, as some people have tried to do. Uh, Ma also, and the KMT shows that from 90 to 99, and um, from 2008 to 2010, the economy really improved, whereas under the DPP, on the Chinese Bien, it didn't improve nearly as much. So we've done the job we set out to do. We need four more years to continue it. Uh, ECFA, of course, is important um, as a campaign slogan. Again, the tie to Chen Shui Bien, you have all these DPP officials, um, including Frank Xie. You just take off the heads, the, and you, it's, it's like a, a puzzle or a box, and at the bottom is Chen Shui Bien again. So they're basically saying, Taman Tong Zai Yi Ni An Ma. I, aren't you concerned, basically, because they're all together, all these DPP people. They all go back to Chen Shui Bien. Piggy banks, we can talk about that. There's, Clay said I would talk more about it, but he didn't give me enough time to do it, so I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but basically, the piggy banks are there. We can talk about that more. Or the angry bird, Fun Nu Niao, very interesting. Um, now, with the, the DPP asking Ma Zong Tung some questions in terms of cross-strait relations, in terms of sovereignty, in terms of the people. Uh, again, if there's time, we can talk about that. This is, this is um, basically calling to question the notion of a peace treaty or any agreement with the mainland on issues of domestic jurisdiction, uh, how it would affect sovereignty. Um, Taiwan's first woman president, Tsai Ing-wen, uh, the fuzzy, woman fuzzy image, Raimin Yao Da An Ding. So it's a different kind of stability she's talking about. Um, and here's this unity thing, this coalition that she's pushing, um, which didn't go very far. Both James Sung and the KMT people said it's a non-starter. We're not going to collaborate with the DPP. Too many differences. Uh, but she, she pushed that strongly, um, basically, ab about um, this consensus and the unity of Taiwan, um, this the spirit of this great unity, a new government. Uh, it wasn't uh, that successful. Lee Dong Hui, of course, is very active in the campaign. Here's uh, give Ty Taiwan an opportunity. Here's his reasons for why you should support the DPP. Very important for the D T TSU uh, of, of Lee Dong Hui. They were appealing in this ad to get at least 5% of the vote, and they got at 9%. They did very well. So th the DPP and the TSU worked together, in a sense, to get a split ballot. So if you split your vote so that, it, given the nature of the election system, no time to go into any detail, in addition to the presidential election and the legislative elections by district, you also have a party uh, slate. And if you vote 
in this case, for the DPP and the TSU, you get enough for the TSU. And in fact, they got their three seats, as did the PFP. So they, if you have three, seat, three seats in the legislative union, you can form a caucus. And that's very important and be taken seriously. Um, now, Frank, this is a minor thing in a sense, but Frank Scheer, the previous presidential candidate for the DPP, and I found it very interesting because there are even footnotes quoting articles from the China Journal and these academic sources, you never see that in the United States, uh, to show scientifically that the KMT did more neg negative campaigning than the DPP in this election. Also, again, something you've never seen in the United States, uh, both sides mobilized scientists, academics, professors, university presidents to sh with names of people supporting them. That would be the kiss of day. Can you imagine Newt Gingrich or Ron Paul having a list of USC professors who support you? <laughs> Everybody assumes we're all Marxist-Leninists. So, you, you, so that's the DPP with all their scientists. Uh, not, and the KMT has 1,700 uh, uh, professors and, and scholars uh, signing on to them. Uh, James Sung, his, uh, only one slide for James Sung, uh, the silent majority basically, you know, the crunch time has arrived, now's the chance, because James Sung, we went to his rally in Taichung, he basically uh, was making the argument that uh, people are going to come out of the, he didn't say the woodwork, but people are going to come out basically, uh, they're not saying it publicly. And we, we talked to a lot of taxi drivers among others who said Sung was the best candidate, but I can't vote for him uh, because it's going to really hurt. Uh, uh, the pan blue people. He has no chance. Shiming Du was mentioned. Um, Professor Law, for example. His appeal, he's an interesting character. He was mentioned in the context of the uh, whether Tai is gay. I think somebody mentioned him. But, but in fact, uh, he's a real maverick going way back. He used to be an important DPP player. But in his advertisements, and most independents had no money for advertisements. Um, and even James Sung didn't have much money. But he's basically, again, saying, uh, basically, split your ballot. And in the Zhengdang Piao, where you're voting for parties, vote number one on, on the name list, or about nine or so, or more, uh, for his, his party so he can actually uh, get a seat. He was number one on their list. Um, two last points, and then I'm going to stop. Thank you. Uh, Lian Zhan uh, basically told Sung to quit the campaign because they were afraid it would take away from the Pan Blue vote for the KMT if, if you voted for James Sung. And in fact, that was very effective, which is why it was predicted he'd get as much as, Sung would get as much as 10% of the vote in the futures market. He only got 2.8%. So the fear that he would really hurt the KMT um, and that the election was really very close had a big effect. And even though Sung didn't quit, uh, people didn't vote for him. And finally, uh, it was uh, Clay, had, I think, mentioned also Doug Paul of the U.S. What was U.S. policy? A lot of Dan may or may not talk about this, I don't know, or Vincent may talk about it, uh, but it was very interesting <coughs> that uh, former U.S. official, former head of AIT, basically uh, was supporting the KMT quite openly, as far as I'm concerned, um, and whether that's an interference um, in Taiwan politics, you can decide for yourself. Okay, I'll stop there. Thanks.